back at it folks hi guys so I just experienced cramps and quite a bit of bleeding Hi guys, my name is M. Welcome back. Thank you for being a part of my fertility journey. Let me tell you what's today's date. So it's currently 14th of January. It's so long guys. Okay, and um I think it's almost like nine months since my last uh, miscarriage. And I did vlog a bit here and there, but I didn't vlog much because uh I wasn't feeling it, okay? But anyway, just to give you guys an update on what happened after that. So after my second miscarriage, uh, we went for a consultation with the gynae at Mount A. And she actually recommended us to get uh, different kinds of testings yet again. Uh, I think hormonal testings or whatever, whatever testings to take a look at how uh, my body is, like what's happening, like why does this keep happening. So she actually gave us a list and quotation of all the testings and the total sum, if I'm not wrong, because I don't have the document anymore. Um, it's actually around 1,000-ish. And at that point of time, after the second miscarriage, I already felt very hopeless in a sense. I felt that I wasted so much money on the two miscarriages. I think all in, I spent around 2,000 plus. And I felt that, yeah, I just wasted so much money on the two miscarriages. There was no outcome. And then now I have to do more testings. I need to spend more money. The 1,000 plus was just not sitting with me. It wasn't justifiable for me. So I made the decision uh, to go to the government hospital instead, which is KKH Women's Hospital. I mean, me and Kenneth made the decision, but mainly all the tests would be done of, on me. So um, I'm telling you guys that I made the decision. One month after I filmed the video, which is around like the first week of May, I actually went to uh, Sengkang Polyclinic because I stayed around there at that point of time uh, to get a referral letter. So the reason why I'm getting a referral letter would be because I've heard from people that if I want to get a subsidized medical fee at KKH, uh, the only way to do that would be to get a referral letter in polyclinic. So I went down to the polyclinic, did the usual stuff, got a referral letter, and to my surprise, I actually only waited two weeks for my appointment. So after that, uh, they dropped me a message giving me an appointment time slot, and it happened to be on 31st May, 10.20 a.m. That was the start of my KKH journey so do take note that the moment you get a referral letter from a polyclinic you will automatically be under KKH subsidized so KKH subsidized means you cannot choose the gynae you cannot choose the doctor in a way you you also can't really choose the appointment they give you what appointment you just got to take what they give you so um at this point of time I know Probably a lot of people at this point of time, they want to go to a specialist or whatever, but because I am very concerned about the cost and everything, so I decided to go the subsidized route. And I know that the gynae that they'll be giving me would be uh, different gynees each time, but it's perfectly fine with me because I'm just doing all the testings. So I went down. Uh, the first appointment was with a female doctor. I think she was like a specialist fertility doctor so she's scheduled for a blood test for me to check all the usual stuff which was what i mentioned in the previous video like thyroid hormones etc and everything was clear so she told me to go back to try okay like just try anyway i was on this three months break of trying so i wasn't really actively trying at the point of time i was just going for all these rounds of testing yeah after that, they scheduled another appointment which was on 14th July. This was after the blood test and after the doctor asked me to try. Okay, so on 14th July, um, they got me down for appointment to pump my fallopian tubes. So this is this procedure is actually called HSG. So what they do is that they will pump an iodine through your fallopian tubes. This is to check if uh, your fallopian tubes are stuck, the structure of your fallopian tubes, if everything inside your fallopian tubes are okay are healthy are good to go because a lot of times infertility could be caused by a lack of eggs coming out from the fallopian tubes because the duct is blocked or whatever so that's why she did this test on me and let me tell you guys it is painful okay it is painful because on usual days i don't get very very bad cramps so the whole feeling of a hcg procedure would be 
um, him pumping a balloon up into your uterus okay so he have to pump the balloon so each time he pump the balloon the balloons get gets bigger and bigger and it presses down onto your uterus and it feels like you're having super super bad cramp so i recommend if you guys are doing hsg please take one day and the next day off because you experience a bit of bleeding and discomfort throughout the whole day so this time around it is a different doctor okay it's another female doctor so she told me that uh, my tubes are fine everything is okay uh, eggs are passing out well that's why i'm able to get pregnant so to be honest they don't know what is wrong with me because um all of my tests are good I'm healthy, I'm fertile, it just shows very positive results from all the tests so they really don't know why do I keep getting miscarriage and after the appointment I felt pretty emotional because um, everybody there, they are carrying their kids coming in and out I mean, I don't know their story but I, I look at them and I just thought to myself like why do I have to do all these tests like, like why am I going through all this um, procedures and everything and I'm still not pregnant and I started crying to myself but yeah it was a very sad moment okay so after that I went back and I got no appointment no news from them because all the tests that I'm supposed to do I've already done it blood tests pumping of the fallopian tubes everything is normal there's nothing wrong with me then I was like why is the why is KKH not following what up with me why is KKH not giving me any solution because at that point of time when they saw that all of my results were good uh, they did not suggest any fertility treatments no IUI no IVF whatever none so I was like what the fuck is going on so I decided to call the clinic and I asked them oh why is there no follow-up appointment like aren't you guys supposed to suggest like a fertility solution for me or whatever so what KKH told me was that they did not uh they did not see a problem with my report they did not see a problem with anything so that's why they did not follow up with me and they don't recommend me doing any fertility treatments because i'm still young and to be honest at that point of time it was already september it's six months after um my second miscarriage and i was angry i was getting extremely extremely impatient and i was uh getting very very sad getting i mean this was at the back of my mind and it was like, like my number one priority at that point of time so i told them no i want an appointment with uh whichever doctor that i can get i want to get fertility treatment so they scheduled an appointment for me which is on 14th of october good morning today i'm working from home it's a thursday it's currently 9 a.m and i'm going for a medical appointment today i gotta draw my blood I don't know this is like the how many times I've dropped my blood but let's go and yeah I have a friend here today Pimply visiting me and one of my notes yesterday but it went down and this time round I was given a male gynae um, to be honest at that point of time me and Kenneth's marriage we just got married right it's the first day of the marriage we were just getting used to each other's um, presence in our life so we actually argued a lot and then we were very stressed over this fertility thing um, that, at that period of time that was when uh, our marriage was on the rocks it was very very tough um, we actually went for counselling and so I, I guess it helped yeah I mean counselling is a consistent forever thing so it's not going to work overnight but yeah we went for counseling it did help a little bit and yeah we were just really rocky at that point of time i want to tell you guys this because me and kenneth we were really not comfortable with male gynees we only wanted female gynees but you know i'm on a subsidized scheme so i'm unable to choose the gynee and they actually posted a male uh, gynee to me and that experience was life-changing i want to say life-changing because um the doctor really made Kenneth feel very 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 comfortable and he was able to um, hit our pain point okay so what is our pain point? our pain point would be because me and Kenneth we are so stressed up about this whole fertility thing sexually we are not very active okay and every time when we have sex we have an agenda in mind we want to try for a baby so I think naturally me and him we just get very very stressed out about this and it actually affected our sex life and we argued quite a bit on this so um, he did tell this to the doctor and the doctor 100% empathized with him 
and told him that he himself actually experienced something like this before with his wife okay i don't know if that's true or not but that trick worked and it made kenneth feel so comfortable after that kenneth and me 180 degree change we want to have a male gynae instead so we felt really comfortable with this uh gynae okay but as usual we are still on a subsidized scheme so um okay but one thing i didn't really like about um that experience was that still he kept asking us to try naturally he was against iui he was against ivf and i was angry i was like no no i really want to do it but he was still against it so he actually gave us this trick which is to he actually gave us a syringe and like a plastic bottle whereby every time when it's my ovulation period okay but we are not in the mood to have sex what kenneth can do would be he can actually masturbate into this plastic bottle and then we will use the syringe to take out the semen and then we would manually uh inject the syringe right into my vagina all the way in so he actually say that this is IUI okay this is actually homemade IUI the difference is that the actual IUI they will give you a hormonal medicine jet everything but at the end of the day I think the procedure is almost similar I don't know I did not uh, research up on IUI much as well but he did mention this is like a homemade IUI so honestly we felt really 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 happy leaving that appointment because uh, after seeing three different gynees in KKH none of them gave me such a solution all of them just kept, uh, kept asking me to try 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 so this particular doctor he was so good he actually asked us to try this method I just felt like he really understood um, our difficulty and he really tried to give a solution so in my previous video uh, I talked about me having a fibroid in my uterus unfortunately even after one year and after my second miscarriage uh, the fibroid is still there to stay so it's actually a polyp and through all the x-ray scans and everything we found out that my polyp is around 1.4 cm so on normal days uh, if you are trying natural method doctors wouldn't recommend you removing it because it doesn't it isn't a threat or anything yeah, so at that point of time, I decided to do IVF because there were no results even from the um, plastic syringe um, homemade IUI method. So we went back for a consultation with the doctor on 14th of November. So he actually did a blood test for me uh, to check my hormones and everything. But unfortunately, um, I wasn't pregnant on 14 november so uh he dis we decided to go ahead with the ivf procedure even though he was still persuading us not to but at the point of time i was just so sick and tired of trying i just really wanted a better solution so um the appointment was really really fast we went down on 14 november i just did another ovarian cancer test Today there's an outcome. There's an outcome. What's the outcome? We are going for surgery on 5th December, which is two weeks later. I'm happy because at least there's progress. But Kenneth is very worried. He was like, Are you sure you really want to do? Are you sure you really want to do? But yeah, we're going to be removing my 1cm poly. And then after that, we are going to be doing IUI. But actually, I want to do IVF. So we'll see how. Within 8 days, uh, they actually scheduled me for a polyp surgery. And so the whole process would be after doing the polyp surgery, I would have to rest for one and a half months, which means after my surgery on 22nd November, I'll have to wait for my next cycle of menses to come. Then after that, um, I can do my IVF. And the reason why I went with KKH for IVF instead of private hospitals would be because um, if they are doing IVF for the first time, the government is giving a lot, a lot of subsidy, all in, based on past other people's experience. Um, it's only around $2,000-ish for IVF, which I felt was very affordable, very justifiable compared to me doing private. 